Assassin's Creed Valhalla gets announced and the community is excited. But buried in this positive news is a more troublesome turn of events. Ubisoft enters another exclusivity deal for third-party distribution on PC with Epic. On the surface for the unsuspecting gaming gamer, this may not be a big deal, but we go into why this is bad for all of us. Yes, all of us. Let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another video. Do me a huge favor before we get into this episode of The Medicine. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up because y'all know the deal, y'all know the reason, and y'all know the slogan. I'm not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. All right, people. So we know that the announcement for Ubisoft's... Um, Next Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Is that how you pronounce it? I know I butchered it in, 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 in the teaser, right? <laughs> Whatever the case may be, you know how I do. Um, the announcement was made the day prior to this recording with uh, the homie Bossy Logic, you know, doing his little art thing on the PC, you know, revealing the, the time setting and the protagonists and all that other good stuff, right? And there's a lot of people excited about this. You know, Xbox people's got they, they got that exclusive or not the exclusive activity but they got the uh, marketing rights so they're like yeah we got the marketing rights and you know the xbox series x enhancement is going to be free and all this other stuff right they got the playstation 5 people saying yo this is going to be fire in our box we even got the stadium people in the house they're talking about hey look man no loads you know what i'm saying we getting that option i mean not option but we're getting that integrated day one all this other stuff's going to look great portability blah 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 you know what i mean so everybody's excited but here's the thing though, you don't hear that level of excitement, or I haven't seen it at least, from one particular group, and that's the PC crowd, right? Um, and I think their enthusiasm has been curbed for the simple fact that, as I said in the teaser, Ubisoft once again does a third-party PC storefront distribution deal, say that fast five times, with the Epic Game Store. And it just, it just leaves a sour taste in your mouth, you know what I'm saying? And as far as I'm concerned, at least, this puts a damper on all that enthusiasm. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, I'm not robustly excited, even though me as someone that games on Stadia, I it, this game is going to be great. But I just don't like this practice, and I think all of us should be, you know, be looking at this and shouldn't be turning a blind eye to it. And I'm concerned because partnering with Epic on exclusivity deals on PC is not only bad for PC gamers but it could potentially lead to something bad for all gamers, okay? Now, people are sitting there saying, well, if that's the case, MM2K, why is Ubisoft doing this? And look, it makes perfect sense why they're doing it. Agree with why they're doing it or not, it makes sense. First and foremost, let's be very clear about something, guys and gals. Ubisoft knows the Epic Game Store is trash. They know it's trash, but here's the deal. First and foremost, A, they're getting money up front and money that's hard for them to look away from after a bad financial period of 2019. You know, 2019 was hard for them and it forced them to push back games, to reevaluate the, the, the quality of them or the perception that the public would have to them. And they went back to the drawing board on a lot of games, right? So turning now money in that in this reality is a tough pill to swallow right secondly the controversy of the epic game store drives players to their store where they get a bigger cut as we all know the reason why that this is kind of under the radar for ubisoft at least is because they have the uplay plus store and the uplay plus store is a damn fine store on pc so even though People may not be able to play this elsewhere where they would prefer to do it. They'll just say, oh, I'll go to the new Play Plus store, which ain't a bad deal. You know what I'm saying? And the culmination of A and B leads to C. By Ubisoft doing it this way, they don't look so greedy. They look to be participating in, quote unquote, the getting better deals for devs. The problem is this anti-greed notion that Ubisoft is trying to be the heir apparent to. I think they came out with a statement 
underlining why they are supporting the Epic Game Store. But at the end of the day, it's a farce, right? Why do I say that? Well, let's take a look at something as Fire Marshal Bill would say. This right here is a slide that I created exposing our good friend Tim Sweeney, AKA Tim Swindle, as it relates to things of this nature, right? I did on a prior video, you can look at a lot of my older um, or my prior Epic Game Store videos, at, you know, after you view this one. Just look up MM2K Epic Game Store. All right, you will be enlightened. But let's go to, let's see here, let's go to slide four here. All right, here's the truth. This is why I say it's a farce. Look at this 30%, which is Steam, which Steam is, is, uh, uh, um, which Steam has takes a cut out of the 30% is is normal in the community. This is normal. This is normal business practices. And the reason why I talk about what Steam is doing, for those of you that aren't familiar, the reason why this has become such a big deal is because everybody's claiming that what Epic, I mean, what Steam does is ripping gamers off. It's just too high and all this other stuff. But this is this is this is the norm in the whole community. Steam does 30%, GOG does 30%, Microsoft Store does 30%, PlayStation Store, even on consoles, this is normal. 30%, 30%, 30%. And that's on top of licensing fees. At least Steam drops down to 25% after 10 million is earned and 20% after 50 million is earned, right? It's just that these entities want a bigger piece of the pie. That's what it is. You know, and what Steam and other storefronts are saying is the power of our store is allowing your game to be so successful. So what you're paying for is the power of our store. It's, it's business. You can't, you know, you want to rene renegotiate your pricing. Let's sit down and talk at the table to a certain degree. You know what I'm saying? Or we don't feel that there's much to renegotiate and it's business, right? So that's why it's a farce at the end of the day that 30 percent is so damn high it's the it's the norm across the board the rent is not too damn high because they're dealing with it elsewhere okay and here's the problem for ubisoft once gamers see past that facade they will then look at ubisoft skeptically more importantly the pc gamers the same pc gamers who in 2019 kept them afloat even though they were having financial woes elsewhere ubisoft admitted that so if, if pc gamers become more and more well versed in what's going on here and why they're doing it this is not going to bode well for them so they need to rethink this okay and i got some solutions that i'll go to at the end of this video however beyond ubisoft this is why this is bad look PC at the end of the day is just an open platform where exclusivity only makes sense to the product provider slash publisher, okay? I go through this argument all the time. This is good, competition is good, it works for consoles, but this is not a console. Console exclusivity does not apply here. PC, look, and here's why it doesn't apply. PC is not owned by one source. Everything that makes up the PC is split in sales. The keyboard, the mouse, the cords, the, the, the HDMI cords, the, the, the case, the motherboard, the memory, everything. Like I said, even the encasing is sold by different entities, okay? Now, could you imagine, you know what I'm saying? If PC was like console, and it went to all one entity where one entity was getting paid off all of the let's just let's just say if that entity was steam let's say if steam owned the whole pc platform right and everything that was sold for a pc the mouse you know controllers all that stuff whether it was first party or third party steam would get a cut of it like console makers get See, console makers get a cut of all that stuff. Everything in relation to their hardware or their ecosystem, they get a cut of it. Third party or not, again, if Steam was in that same position, can you imagine the AAA games and the exclusive games that could be funded by a Steam? They would blow anything else out of the water. But nothing like that exists. There is not one conglomerate that owns PC. 
So the ability to fund and negotiate something like that just isn't there. So, and it's not there because PC is more about innovative, exclusive experiences than it is about exclusive content. PC is just about a bunch of people coming together to give you better ways to play your game or to, to, to provide you more intricate or, or, or nuanced ideas, right? But the AAA experiences or would come exclusive to those that have locked down their system that are getting paid for everything in relation to that system. So that's why I say you got two total, you're comparing apples and oranges when you say, oh, this works on console, so it's gonna work on PC. No, it doesn't make sense to PC. PC is all about openness. And Epic Game Store throws that out the door using their version of conglomerate and corporate greed to lock down desired content in the fashion that it does right and having tim sweeney do that makes it an even bigger problem let's do this i'm gonna go to i'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to my slideshow and i want to show you guys something look at this this is an article by GameIndustry.biz, where way back in the day when Tim Sweeney was complaining about UWP, a type of implementation that Microsoft was working on, but it didn't work out, you know, in between console and, and, and how things were sold in the store. Tim Sweeney had this to say. He said, this is nothing more than the first apparent step towards locking down the consumer PC ecosystem and monopolizing app distribution and commerce. And guess what the Epic Games Store is doing right now? Even Tim Sweeney knows that his own product, the own product that he is, he is peddling right now goes against everything PC is about. Even Tim Sweeney, a.k.a. Tim Swindle, knows that. All right? So this goes beyond just some, you know, oh, PC gamers being hurt about having to use another storefront. No, nobody cares about that. P PC gamers use storefronts all the time, but they use it per choice. And this is locking down choice. This is forcing them to have to play their favorite games in a crappy game store. Now, why do I say all that? I said a crappy game store. What the hell am I talking about? What makes it so crappy? Let's go back to my slide. This is Tim Sweeney in a series of tweets going back and forth with people in regards to something he was something else he was complaining about what was me things aren't working out my way i want to complain and guilt trip people about something so all right so a well-known um pc gamer on twitter responded to him and say hey okay forget all that forget all that crap what's going on with this exclusivity you still need to do this in order to operate in order to make you stick out and tim sweet's like well we were open about that and all the other stuff and then this pc game was like well hold on this don't make any sense because you want us to 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 drink your kool-aid but you're not providing anything to else and he put it out in layman's terms he was like with all the storefronts that are out here guess what with all the money that you're bringing in, your storefront is last. It's horrible, it's trash. He said, these are all the places that I go to and the typical PC gamer goes to before they even think about your store, this is how bad it is. The same storefront that is reeling in with, with uh, um, Fortnite money and then Borderlands money when they were, they were the same people that when Borderlands was exclusive there on PC, they couldn't even keep your cloud saves. People had dozens and dozens of hours of gameplay saved on the cloud that just disappeared. That's how horrible the store is, okay? So not only is, is just this whole integration bad for PC altogether, but let's just say if I agreed that it was good. I still wouldn't opt for the Epic Game Store because their storefront is trash. And everybody knows it's trash from PC gamers, right? Like here, to Ubisoft, as I illustrated earlier. Now, people are saying, especially those that are console gamers, MM2K, what this got to do with me? What this got to do with the tea in China, right? And I say all that to say this. I've said all that, excuse me, rather, to say this. All gamers should care if Epic reach is 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 successful in this area because guess what it may come to consoles and i've illustrated this earlier let's let's 
let's just think this out a little bit. What if Epic then, because they've been successful, let's just say if they were successful here, which I, I believe in the long run they won't be, but it's a shame we gotta deal with this. But let's just say in the long run they are successful. And they say, you know what? Let's see if, if this can work for us on console. And they start crying foul on the 30% they gotta pay on console distribution, right? And in response to that, they create a storefront. They let everybody know, hey, look, we got a console storefront now. We've worked some deals out with some, some uh, publishers and developers. And what happens is, if you come to our storefront and you play games via our storefront on your console, you get access to them 30 days early, <laughs> right? And some of you are probably thinking in the back here, that will never fly because, you know, how would Epic make money? Well, let's just say if Epic says to the console creator, you got to split your 30% with us now. We have worked deals out with these developers and publishers. They're giving us early access for 30 days your consumers want that don't they well if you if you believe that they want that you got to split your 30 percent with us and let's just say for the most part the big two xbox and playstation they say get the hell out of here we're not gonna do that this ain't gonna go nowhere we're not putting that crap on our console right and let's just say tim sweeney says okay fine we'll play we'll play this game because i'm better at it and he strikes a deal with nintendo and makes it a streaming service at first because you know nintendo gets these games at later dates you know what i'm saying um and when people can port them and they don't get all of them but now they're going to have access to all of the big ticket triple a games day and date via a streaming service right and let's just say this thing blows up because you know people love to switch baby this thing blows up and now you got people because they're loving the switch and they're like you know what the switch is my main way to play right now let's just say if they decide to hey i'll just get it on switch a lot of people are saying i might just get the game on switch because even though i got a stream and i'm getting it 30 days early right and then tim sweetie says look this thing is successful y'all your console holder is denying you access to these games for 30 days right when and out when in reality what they would have done is paid uh, publishers and developers to push their games 30 days back elsewhere right because it's not they're not going to release it 30 days early they got to polish the games they're they epic would have paid them to push the game 30 days back for one but let's just say in addition to all that crime tim sweeney says now we have um download solutions on the other consoles for xbox and playstation that we're just waiting for them to accept us and not only will you have the streaming option on those platforms but you can download the games and play them locally it's just your console provider is denying you this right and every and then it actually works because then people start getting upset i want to play assassin creed uh Vahalia 30 days early xbox playstation this is foul this is wrong and xbox has to give in playstation has to give in right and then they gotta cut they gotta split the 15 percent with them which is then gonna hurt their bottom line and, and of course have an effect on what you get from them the exclusives that you love so much what you get from them that's gonna hurt their bottom line because they get a lot of money from their 30 percent deals right now how would you feel if the PC people said, ah, ha, who cares? Competition is great. And Steam has created competition on top of competition. This is you see what I'm saying? Now, before you go and you sit there and you, you say to yourself, MM2K, there's no way in hell that's going to happen. And you think this is far-fetched. I'm going to tell you something. It's 20 plus years in the business world, Fortune 500 world. As if it's not illegal, don't put nothing past these greedy companies or what could happen. For instance, you guys would have never thought that you would see the day that you would see PlayStation exclusives on PC, the, the way that you are and the rate that they're growing on PC, and that you would see PlayStation exclusive titles like MLB being distributed on other platforms. Never say never. 
And if Epic is successful here, because the way that the market is, they're going to be forced to look at other avenues to use their whining and crying to see where they can be successful at. It may not be exactly in the format that I'm telling you, but I'm just trying to give you a broad idea of the griminess of this company and what they could try to do in the future that's going to hamper you even on console. Never doubt the reach. If they can get successful at this on PC, they're going to figure out something to do on console. Trust me. All right. So with that said, what is the ultimate solution? If Ubisoft or any anybody does have a problem with Steam, I don't have a problem with that. I don't care. I mean, I'm not, you know, I love Steam. I think Steam is great, but you know, I'm not mind playing. I don't mind playing games elsewhere on PC. You know what I'm saying? It's just Epic Game Store is the, is the problem. So if you really have a problem with what Steam is doing, A, just have your own storefront, or B, partner with a more gamer-friendly storefront. Like, don't go to Epic Game Store. Maybe go to GOG, right? Like my homie does here, he shows you about seven other different other places you can go to. You can go to GOG or Humble Bundle, work something out with them. But don't go to Epic Game Store, no! They have the worst storefront out there, period. And again, don't think my stuff is far-fetched. It may not come in this in that exact light, in that example that I gave, but I'm telling you, never put nothing past these greedy companies and these greedy conglomerates. This is where, again, we, we're seeing example after example where it's better for us as gamers to put down our flags and come together as one community to block out all this stuff that's going to hamper the hobby that we love. And that's it from your boy MM2K. Let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below, because like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the Broadband Bullies, PNTS, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and yes, the Stadia Dosage. And with all that being said, if you did like it, again, please do me a huge favor, like, sub, and share this stuff out. And with that, you all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.